All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the IPFS JS Core Team Weekly Sync. Yay. Um, a lot of holidays, so a lot of people are out, uh, but we will go ahead and get started. Since we are so short, I'm just going to go ahead and take a note ticker. Um, and we will jump into this. If you haven't already added your name to the attendees list, please do so now. And also add your update if you haven't done so. And we'll jump in with Jim, who is out. Um, Jim is working on IPFS Camp Course C. Uh, he's looking at some test lab stuff. And I think he's out this week on vacation. Um, and is going to be working on finishing up some IPFS camp stuff. If you have any questions for him, you can email him or wait until he's back. All right, next up, me. Uh, yeah, so last week and this week, a lot of prep for IPFS camp, of course, B. Um, as part of that, I was running through some annoying things with libp2p, like libp2p creation. Um, so libp2p now exports a create libp2p method. Uh, the link to the docs are in the crypt pad. Um, basically, that lets you create a libp2p instance the same way as the constructor, but you no longer have to create a peer info in advance. So if you don't care about the peer info and the default works for you, you can just create that uh, and move on with your life. Um, also fixed an issue with the switch where when we blacklist, if an incoming dial happens, we'll reset the blacklist. We weren't doing that previously. Um, so this helps, especially on local, if you're booting up um, one node before the other and you do MDNS discovery, like you can end up breaking some connection there and be blacklisted for a little bit. Um, so that will get corrected. Um, yeah, and then along with IPFS course B work, I'm gonna be working on um, connection prioritization in libp2p. So what that will let us do is for things like uh, JS IPFS in the browser, we'll be able to specify um, our priority nodes, like the preload nodes, and say that, hey, we don't want to lose connections to these, so when the connection manager calls connections, we will avoid calling those ones, and then we'll try to maintain connections to those nodes. Um, and that is it for me. Any questions? David? That configuration is sounds really cool. Is there any update on the delegated routing stuff? Like, is that something uh, that will be ready by IPFS Camp? Uh, we're trying to do that. I'm not sure yet. Um, Vashko has been picking that up since I've been pretty busy. Um, but we synced with Michael Burns, and so he's working on getting that configuration. So we're just trying to sort through what exactly needs to be configured and how that needs to be configured with. Um, go so i think we'll mm -hmm. yeah try to get that going before and will it be like special nodes or will we use like the previous like gateway nodes and stuff? we talked about just using the preload nodes for that got it i guess it makes sense um well yeah i, I guess it makes sense but at the same time like having kind of like a failure mode where like if preload doesn't work, like you can still do delegated routing because you can still use circuit relay it can mm -hmm. be a good thing. So, so yeah, like do whatever it's possible. I know that like, time is short, but I just, just have in mind that like, um, like separating them might be you know, like a, a, a wiser choice in the, in the long term. Right. Yeah. And I think, yeah, having separate nodes, but I think at least in the interim, that will give us kind of a workaround for uh, IPFS camp stuff. Um, and then as, because I think ideally we would have dedicated nodes for that, or we just wouldn't need it because we'd have direct connection, but um, yeah. Got it. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah, I had a question about the uh, connection prioritization. Yep. So I think I read somewhere that you were you were talking about using tags or something like that. Is that right? Yeah. So uh, one method we had talked about is kind of relating it to uh, tagging the connection manager. There's a lot of things that we need to. Alex, I'm going to mute you. Um, a lot of things that we. Uh, uh, some of the things that we need to do are for like the the subsystems, like the DHT and PubSub and things like that, is what we're looking at with connection management is to be able to specify like 
subsystems that that potentially comes from. Um, a lot of this is going to be worked out in the Connection Manager v2 spec, which is still in very, very early draft stage. Um, but being able to tag the connection with all of those components. Um, but we may not, I probably won't do tagging right now just because Connection Manager v2 is going to come out. So it's probably going to be a more crude version of that. Um, but I haven't quite decided what that's going to look like, but I'll probably put together a proposal this week when I start working on that. So beyond uh, connections that sort of like have to be maintained and they'll bring themselves back up if they go down, what other kind of things would there be? So there's bringing them back up and then um, connection manager not calling them. So when we hit the connection manager max, they'll get a pass when it goes in to, to check the nodes. If they happen to be ranked low, um, which is probably not going to happen because they'll probably have a lot of traffic going through them. Um, if they are ranked low, though, we'll we'll skip culling those. All right. Uh, next is Vashko, who is also out. Um, he's working with uh, Michael Burns and Infra on getting the delegated routing nodes up and running. Um, also working on IPNS over PubSub interop issues. Um, he's looking at the reprovider work for JSIPFS because one of the things we need with the DHT is to actually reprovide so content doesn't expire or our provide calls don't expire after one day um, because that's, I believe, one day is the default for JS or for the DHT provides. Um, Reviewing a lot of async migration work from Kumavis on DHT. Thanks again, Kumavis, for that. And uh, he's working on a presentation that he'll be presenting with Rauk at the uh, Avero University uh, for master's work. Um, and then a few other things. Interrupt tests for a hybrid pub sub network. So I think that's with uh, getting gossip sub working and then falling back to flood sub. Um, working on interrupt for that. If you have questions for Vashko, reach out to him. He should be back tomorrow. Uh, next up, Dirk. Yeah, a quick one for me. So I've just been working on configuration profiles, which is like, uh, you know, if you have a, if you're running your node in a data center, you can quickly specify the configuration for it. And uh, next time I'm going to work on on locking for the pinning system. At the moment, there's no locking, so you know that. It could cause some problems if people are doing a lot of pin updates at the same time. I'm also going to be doing a refactor of the pinning codes uh, so that it works a little bit more like the Go system, wherein you can uh, do a bunch of pin changes and then flush them all out at once. Cool. Any questions for Dirk? Nope. All right. Alex. Hey, so yeah, so last week we got the PR merge for having the IPFS repo compared to async await, which is amazing. Uh, that got released already. Uh, I integrated uh, Hugo's WASM implementation of the uh, Rabin chunker into UnixFS, which is great. Uh, also, wrote some interrupt tests for it. Um, so we can now guarantee that the Rabin implementation is the same between Go and, and, uh, and JS. Uh, fixed all the bugs in NPM on IPFS, at least, you know, closed all the issues. Um, and uh, yeah, I started working on the, the roadmap for the package managers uh, special interest group. Next is IPFS camp, IPFS camp, and IPFS camp. So um, I have this like NPM in a box, which is going to run the registry uh, that we have running on JS dot packages or whatever it is. Um, red, sorry, yeah. Uh, registry.js, IPFS.io, uh, is going to run on this Raspberry Pi as then came in a box. Um, so I started adding support for MDNS so it can broadcast to the network. Hey, I'm here. And then you can use MPM and IPFS, which will then find that and use that as the, um, you know, make a connection to that directly because it's the thing that has all the packages, uh, which will be super cool when the internet goes down at the camp, which of course is going to happen. It's not going to happen, but of course it's going to happen. Um, yeah, so then I'm uh, going to, because so I need to kind of get that running so that it starts syncing NPM so that it's, so I don't have it sat in my hotel room the whole time buzzing away like uh, like I did in Glasgow. Um, anyway, so that is going to be me to, to 
today, maybe tomorrow morning, and after that, uh, the, the um, course, um, the P two P course, is what's going to take up the rest of my time. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Any questions? All right. No questions. I'm glad I, uh, MPM is is it's bug free. No oh, bugs. They said it couldn't be done. <laughs> Even Hello World has bugs in it, but this doesn't. <laughs> uh, I guess like a, another question, just like a curiosity. Like I remember like a, a one of the big pitches, sorry, I'm like all dark because of like the lightning situation here. Uh, one of the big pitches of NPM and IPFS back in 2015, 2016, was really like the um, install modules without internet, like install modules without connecting to any place. Uh, and like since then, like that messaging has changed to, oh, we have like the clone of the registry and you can now like just point to this registry. Um, what do you think about that? And like, what is the reason why the, the, the change in, in that communication and, and why aren't we making more like front facing, like the, the demo where like one person can like just take the, the cable, the Ethernet cable from the, 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 the switch or the router to make sure like there is no internet and still install modules from machine A to machine B. Um, I think the, I think it, I think it wasn't a conscious change. I think it was just like, this is a thing that we've built, let's talk about it. And then people started talking about that and that other stuff. I think the thing that kind of interests me is uh, like publishing IP and nest names for all the modules. Um, cause then you don't actually need a centralized registry at all. If you can resolve an IPNS name that resolves to a vacuum. I mean, that would be super fun to talk about. Yeah, but you just need one IPNS name for the entire registry, right? Um, like you don't need 12. I know, because if you, like if I write a module and I publish an IPNS name, yeah. then you can pull down that module without needing a centralized anything. Whereas if you were publishing one IPNS name for the whole registry, then, then you're centralized. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, like what I'm thinking is like from where we are today, today like to just saying that we use IPNS, we'll be publishing one record from going where we are today to having distributed publishing where like people can like own their own publishing to the IPFS network. Yes, like everyone would have to have their own uh, IPNS keys and, and like um, publish their names. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's like it's something to consider, right? Like it, it is, definitely important to just like spark the the magic in people's eyes like to to remember that like hey like here's the thing that like when you are offline the thing doesn't work and pm just crashes or like your neighbor cannot install the thing but we npm and ipfs like that's that's a feature that's already baked in like it's already like a uh, a promise that is fulfilled and and it's there um and and i think like the the registry that just IP, the, not just that IPFS that IO, I kind of like, although it provides like a, an essential piece of infrastructure, it also has hidden like one of these cool, very cool features. Um, and so, I don't know, like, I mean, I'm just highlighting that because like uh, from all the conversations I've been having, like people like don't seem to get that the thing about NPM IPFS is actually that you can like just distribute packages from your machine to the next machine and, and so on. They always think it's just about like having like mirrors that sit behind HTTP endpoints, um, but like you still are like using HTTP anyway. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think the mirror is like the least interesting thing about the whole thing. Exactly. It's this like, you know, with like Entropic coming along, people start to talk about distributed registries and with, um, you know, like GitHub's registry as well and, and all that. Like now is the time to start saying, hey, look, this stuff can be distributed too. You know, and here is the tool set for you to do it. That is really yeah. interesting. Yeah, and, and definitely like Entropic is kind of like a, a great first step towards that conversation because like it's about federation uh, and and federation is not just about like connecting a bunch of mirrors and and making them like share the load. It's also about like what is the the authority that keeps publishing like the update to the packages, like who says like like who confirms that like it's Alex publishing a package, right? Um, and then like it, it gets us like into the right direction to have a conversation. Oh, like we can take a step for, further and have like completely distributed, um, still federated. Like the federation is still important because you still want to have some authorities that like, can protect the users and can provide convenience. But if you want to go like full length and like just like be your, your own publisher, uh, you can. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, is anyone like from um, in Tropic coming to PFAS camp? I don't think so, because it's only been around for like a month. Well, is it worth still inviting them? I think it is. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Wanna, wanna shoot an email? Um, sure. Sweet. Awesome. All right. Do we have anything else? There's nobody here for cross team updates. Uh, other notes, Vashko is out on Friday for his presentation. And then I am technically out next week, but I will likely be around working on IPFS camp stuff. Um, but yeah. If that is it. Um, sorry, one thing on that. Don't need like inviting like Chris Dickinson and CJ to, I assume that mean, uh, to IPFS camp. Do you actually have any rooms left? I think I saw um, thing that... Definitely check with the events team. Like the, the response I've been getting is like if it's super important for the success of the project or for like whatever conversations we want to have, they can make a, a way to figure it out. But like, it requires some shuffling. It would be great if like for the events team, it would be great if we had thought about this like a month ago, but like they can do magic. So <laughs> JS uh, core team will sleep outside in tents to make it happen. <laughs> Exactly. Well, like, nice, right? exactly. Like the the thing is, ask nicely. <laughs> <It's safe. laughs> I laid up on bug spray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you can always like sit by the pool and like super nice outside, and, like it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like I, I think it's doable if it's important. That, that's the thing. Cool. All right. Thank you all. Yeah. yeah, that's it. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you next week. Bye. Bye bye.